I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to present my work and uh, all of you for joining in today. I'm Sylvia Galguti from the Brevan Lab at uh, Rockefeller, and I'm a visiting grad student uh, from the University of Pécs in Hungary. My work aims to dissect the biology of Huntington um, in the signaling events of early human development. Huntington is known to be a protein that's hard to catch. Uh, it's ubiquitously expressed with a highly complex functionality and uh, very dynamics of cellular localization. Uh, and it became famous because an abnormal CAG expansion in its gene is responsible for Huntington's disease, uh, devastating uh, neurodegenerative disorder. While animal models from Drosophila turodens provided very important information about the biology of Huntington, it is also very important to understand the species-specific contributions using a human disease model. Therefore, we use CRISPR-Cas9 to generate an isogenic collection of human embryonic stem cell lines to a model HD. And since disease onset and severity correlate with the number of CAG repeats, uh, we generated an allelic series with increasing CAG length, where 20 is the y tap and 72 corresponds to the, the repeat length that's found in the juvenile form of the disease. Thereby, we are able to model the entire disease spectrum and also to understand the normal function of Huntington in this context, we generated a knockout. When we previously differentiated these uh, ESLs into cortical neur neurons, um, an abnormal cellular phenotype appeared in the CAG expanded uh, cell lines. Uh, and this was characterized by multinucleation and it also, also showed a, um, defective cellular polarization at day 45 of differentiation. Uh, interestingly, the Huntington knockout phenocopied the CAG expanded cell lines, um, making it consistent with the loss of Huntington function uh, rather than the broadly accepted gain of toxic function hypothesis. This and other HD phenotypes produced by our ESLs prompted us to further investigate the role of Huntington in early embryogenesis. Um, indeed, Huntington is widely expressed from the fertilized egg onwards, and probably the most compelling proof of Huntington function in early development uh, is the fact uh, that its uh, uh, knockout is embryonic lethal at, embryonic, at uh, gastrulation stages in the mouse. Uh, therefore, we wanted to turn to the earliest window when the ectodermal compartment arises, and we used our gastrulate culture system to do this. Um, in short, when ES cells are grown in a geometrically confined micro patterns and induced with BMP4 for 48 hours, they self organize into radially symmetrical patterns that model gastrulation. This is a highly reproducible and quantifiable system when we can uh, quantify the expression pattern of each of the germ layer markers uh, with a single cell precision. When we uh, this provide a single stimulus to these micropattern colonies, uh, it induces a wave of differentiation from the colony edges towards the center. And BMP4 induces trough ectoderm from the colony edges, but it also elicits a, a wave of signaling downstream by inducing wind and nodal. These in turn uh, produce brachyri positive mesodermal and SOC17 positive endodermal populations. Uh, finally, in the absence of any of these signalings, a SOX2 positive ectodermal compartment arises in the colony centers. When we performed this gastroloid assay with our CAG expanded cell lines, what we found is that each of the genotypes was able to produce e uh, all three germ layers. Uh, but surprisingly, what we also found is uh, that there was a, a gradual reduction in the central SOX2 domain. Um, with increasing CAG length. And this HD phenotype was uh, highly reproducible across multiple colonies. Um, and we could also quantify a clear CAG length dependency across multiple uh, clones in each of these genotypes. So we wanted to understand where this HD gastrolate phenotype is coming from. Um, and in order to do that, we wanted to dissect gastrolate signaling by systematically activating or inhibiting the downstream signaling pathways. Um, we used IWP2 uh, to block wind and we used SB to block nodal signaling. 
uh, both of these molecules block mesendodermal differentiation in both of the genotypes. Uh, so in this case, BMP4 alone uh, will induce uh, trophectoderm differentiation from the colony edges, and a SOX2 positive ectodermal compartment uh, will remain uh, maintained in the colony centers. Uh, the quantification confirmed uh, that uh, the reduction in the central ectodermal domain that we originally uh, observed in the BMP uh, in the BMP condition was significantly diminished uh, by block downstream signaling. Therefore, we wanted to look at the wind and nodal level next. We used cheer to uh, the small molecule cheer to uh, activate wind signaling in combination with the blocked or activated uh, active nodal signaling. In this case, the CAG expanded cell lines only produced an HD phenotype when active signaling was uh, active. Um, and in this case, um, the reduction in the ectodermal compartment was similar to the original BMP4 induced phenotype. Therefore, we concluded that, uh, that it is due to enhanced uh, active in signaling. Now, we also wanted to understand the function of uh, the normal function of Huntington in this context. Um, and we used the uh, Huntington knockout uh, in order to do that. Um, this genotype um, produced an even more severe uh, phenotype compared to uh, the expanded CAG length lines. And in this case, um, the central ectodermal domain uh, completely diminished. Uh, and this suggested, and this is consistent uh, with a loss of Huntington function with this enhanced active in signaling. Now the mechanisms of uh, uh, gastrolate uh, and the mechanisms that control gastrolate signaling and self-organization has been previously established in the lab. Uh, one of them is the relocalization of TGF beta receptors to the basolateral compartment, and the other one is the diffusion of secreted inhibitors. And these two together play a role in uh, radial fate positioning of the gastroids. Uh, now we wanted to see whether this uh, model can be applied to understand um, the HD phenotype that we are seeing in our gastroloids. Um, and to do that, we first wanted to understand the status of receptor polarization. For that, we used uh, SMAT23 as a proxy to analyze early uh, active and signal response. Uh, as you can see in the Y type, uh, nuclear SMAT23 was, uh, slowly, uh, was solely constricted to the colony edges, consistent with um, apical receptor localization in, in, in these areas. Um, and this confinement of signaling response was impaired in the expanded Kaglen clients, lines where it was completely lost in the knockout. So this suggests a role for Huntington in maintaining spatial restriction to active in signaling. Uh, next, we wanted to understand the polarization uh, of TGF-beta receptors a little bit more deeper, and for that we used transfer filters and grew uh, ESLs at high density on them. This is important because this mimics colony centers where the receptors, the TGF-beta receptors are relocalized to the basolateral compartment, therefore only allowing for, for uh, signaling uh, when the ligands are presented from the basal side and remaining completely silenced and signaling being blocked uh, when ligands are presented from uh, the apical side. Uh, this is what we can see in the 20 CAG. And in 56 CAG, while basal signaling is maintained, we also observed uh, ectopic uh, apical SMAT23 activation. This was also the case in Huntington knockout. We also wanted to uh, evaluate the BMP branch of uh, TGFB the signaling uh, by uh, looking at PSMAD1 uh, activation. And in this case, all three genotypes uh, maintained basal uh, signal reception and PSMAD1 activation. Uh, however, the 56 CAG and the knockout remained silent after epically presented BMP, uh, similarly to the Y type. Uh, therefore, the polarity defect uh, that, we, that we observe uh, in the CAG expanded cell lines and also in the knockout is specific to active in signaling. Uh, 
Now we wanted to understand whether this is coming from impaired epithelial integrity or is it the relocalization of active receptors that is impaired uh, by Huntington CAG expansion and also um, in the Huntington knockout. Uh, so we looked at thigh junction uh, marker ZO1 at this MAC23 activation sites on the uh, apical surface and both in 56 CAG and 20 CAG the ZO1 expression remained um, uninterrupted while in Huntington knockout, there are patches uh, of, uh, of impaired uh, thigh junction with loss of ZO1, and these patches uh, co-localize uh, with the SMAT23 activation sites uh, epically. We also wanted to test functionally um, uh, the epithelial integrity by measuring transepithelial electrical resistance, and these values were very similar in 20 CAG and 56 CAG. 56 CAG. However, it was significantly uh, lower in Huntington knockout. This suggests a uh, role for Huntington in maintaining proper cellular polarization and uh, intact epithelial integrity. However, it does not provide a mechanistic explanation why the Huntington CAG expansion or how does it uh, impair uh, at the uh, polarized uh, activin signaling. Uh, in order to understand that, uh, we went on to assess TGF-beta receptor expression and the localization using an overexpression system. Um, and here uh, we can see that the active and receptors are, are solely localized to the basal lateral side in 20 CAG. However, this is impaired in 56 CAG, uh, showing um, mislocalized, epically mislocalized active end receptors, which is even more abundant in the knockout. Consistent with our uh, data, the B, this does not affect uh, with the BMP receptors. Uh, these are solely localized to the basal lateral side in all three uh, genotypes. Uh, finally, these results uh, explain uh, that uh, active and receptor mislocalization is what's driving the enhanced active and signaling that we are seeing in the Huntington CAG expanded uh, cell lines. In conclusion, I want to uh, pro propose a model to explain uh, how Huntington CAG expansion impairs cellular polarity. In wild type, both TGFB the receptor lo receptors localized to the basal lateral side, uh, therefore they remain silent to epically presented ligands. Uh, Huntington CAG expansion in turn fails to relocalize um, um, the uh, active receptors completely to the basal lateral compartment, leading to ectopic uh, SMAT23 uh, signal activation. And this is consistent with the loss of function. Uh, in addition, loss of Huntington, besides impairing the relocalization of active receptors to the basal lateral compartment, it also elicits a range of polarity defects that extends to impaired tie junction integrity. And now I just want to thank uh, Ali Brivanlu, my supervisor, for uh, supporting me to uh, perform this work. Also, my co-authors uh, on the paper, the CHDI team, the admin team, um, the Bioimaging Resource Center at Rockefeller, the CHDI uh, Foundation for funding, and uh, my supervisor, Judith Bator, um, at UPMS. Thank you. Um. We have a couple of questions already, and I encourage others uh, to add, ask the questions. First, is there any evidence from Huntington's patients of early developmental defects? And it's surprising that function so early can cause uh, adult progressive disease. So I, I had a similar question, you know, along those lines. How many repeats uh, are incompatible with embryonic development? It seems like 56, you can get you can go through development and then you'll have Huntington's phenotypes later, but how does, uh, how does that happen? If you could talk about that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I, as far as I know, there are, uh, there were detected even over a hundred repeats um, in, in kids that, um, and, and in this case, they, the onset was very early on. I think the earliest onset was detected around two, three years old. Uh, so that's the that's the uh, the most severe end of the of the juvenile form. Um, but yes, it's um, it's very surprising in a sense that that even the later onset uh, mutations 
from 40 to 50 um, can be can provide a phenotype in this very early uh, setting and um, and actually I think I mean there there is a growing body of, of literature that is pointing to a neurodevelopmental uh, component uh, of Huntington's disease and I think one of the most important uh, papers con supporting this and contributing to this was uh, published last year uh, by Sandrine Humbert's group where they used um, uh, human embryos um, at post-conception week 13, I believe. And already at that stage, they were able to find uh, in the human fetal tissue uh, mislocalization of mutant hunting tin. They also found mislocalization of tight junction complexes, mm -hmm. impaired cellular polarity in the cortex of these fetuses at that stage. And, and those repeats were about 39 to 43, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. So there's a lot of variability still, though with regards to repeat length and phenotype but uh, yeah definitely and normally these um these babies are are born and and normally at this repeat length uh the disease onset doesn't really happen between before 40 50 years of age so i mm -hmm. think there should be a, a high degree of, of compensation that happens mm -hmm. to to these phenotype yeah. so another question is is um you discussed how polarization was impacted by repeats or loss of function. Is neuronal polarization also affected uh, uh, in, potentially through a similar mechanism? Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, in the uh, when when disease onset already happens in, in patients. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. So, so in, basically, in the, is, the, is the defect in neuronal development also because of a polarization problem yes yeah, so definitely there is uh in in these um papers that are that are uh describing the neurodevelopmental aspects of huntington's disease found uh impaired neur neuronal polarization at multiple stages our previous paper also found that uh at the at the rise of uh of cortical neurons, we saw uh, impaired cellular uh, neuronal polarization. We also saw that at the neural rosette stage, and also again in Sandrine Humber's paper, uh, the polarization and the differentiation of neuronal progenitors were impaired in the in the fetal cortices. Uh, also, in 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 the disease, um, the polarization of uh, and the secretion of VDNF, for example, is is impaired. Uh, in, in, in adults uh, in, the, in the cortex and also how the medium spine neurons are able to receive this BDNF. So yes, there is neuronal polarization defect. Great. Well, thanks, Sylvia.